All right. Awesome. Glad to have you here, Steve. I've been following you for a long time. I think I mentioned that to you when you met a few years ago. So it's cool. Yeah. To meet yeah. yeah. yeah awesome, man. Thanks for having me on. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, because we met in on it a couple years ago, uh, briefly. And um, I actually saw you speak like six years ago at the 21 convention when I was first starting oh. my journey of stuff. Um, yeah. And you're, you're, you're talking about the sexual life and like, you're one of the few yeah. coaches with like, women on stage. It's like, oh, women actually like him. So I really want to pay attention. Oh, this yeah. was in Austin then? This was in Austin. Yeah, I think. Cool. Yeah, because I was working yeah. with Dave great. Kuchy back then. And, oh, great, uh, great. Yeah. And uh, you mentioned offhand one taste, like uh, you know, someone asked a yeah. question about sex. Yeah. Like, oh, yeah, check out that one taste thing. And I don't know if I mentioned this to you. My, my podcast listeners know this. I went really deep in that world. I had a whole cult adventure. It's like your offhand yeah. remark actually affected my life <laughs> a lot. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, that was funny because, uh, yeah, I, I remember because I was talking with you about that at On It too. Mm -hmm. But um, uh, yeah, man, that's it. God, that, that's an interesting world. You know, one taste is, uh, I mean, I don't know enough about it, but they, it's a good idea. And I guess there's a lot of ways where it could get confused or messed up, but I guess they got, they got in some hot water or something. So I heard. Yeah. 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 Lately. I mean, it was a little bit cause I was in an article that mentioned them. I didn't mean to take them down cause I actually had a great experience, but I was telling the but truth. I, I didn't know so. that through you. So. Oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 No, anyway, crazy. Uh, so I want to speak to you about masculinity, but um, maybe mm -hmm. you could even start with this because one thing that drew me to one taste uh, back in 2012 was that it was a matriarchal environment and it was totally different mm -hmm. than the places I've hung out in sports and like the pickup community, things like that. And um, I really liked a lot of the videos you've been sharing recently about like yeah. understanding feminism and like alt-right stuff and how like, basically, I mean, I'm putting in my words, but you basically have to have, have compassion for people's pain. And it's like a really interesting time we're in where people just don't seem to get that. Everyone's polarizing to other sides. So I'm curious to see like what your experience has been with sharing your views and like, have you been being attacked or how you've been approaching this hate stuff that's all over the place? I mean, look, I, you know, it's funny because I was talking about this with somebody at on it recently because I'll record some videos there and uh, they're, they're like, man, but Steve, there's no like alt right people here or there's no like hardcore feminists here there's no people that are spreading hate here um which is interesting and i'll tell you this in the martial arts and fitness communities have their own problems and issues and and again they have issues with masculinity but it's great it's it's really an interesting thing because i just about two weeks ago i started posting on my facebook like kind of regularly like you know how has feminism hurt you or what is the problem with masculinity or what are traumas that you've gone through in your life and what, really what I noticed immediately with, I think I posted what's more valuable, honesty or the, tr or the truth or uh, empathy. And somehow it turned into like feminism with like really angry dudes. And so I was like, wow, there's a lot of angry guys who are on my Facebook. And I didn't really know that because I don't post on my public wall so much anymore. For the past two weeks I have been. I just post within the groups that I have. And uh, I was kind of out of touch with that. And a lot of the guys who follow me came from the, the pickup scene or the dating scene and have naturally moved into these different types of thoughts that revolve around like blame or ownership or control or power and these types of things. Whereas I don't think in the human dynamic that was uh, a necessary component for it. It, it didn't. I think all those things are not bad, power or control or blame. They have their time and their place. But to have your belief system dominated by that, I think it is not a good thing. And they come out of, in my opinion, scarcity of not being able to express in different ways. And that doesn't mean like scarcity, oh, like you're beta or weak. It means that, you know, we grow up in an environment now where we don't have role models. And, but yet we have an urge to find role models. And I'm not trying to blame society on this. We're at a point in society where we don't have a lot of access that maybe, you know, we, you know, had generations ago or how we evolved and all these different things. And so yet we have the urge for them. We have the urge to, you know, want to define our thoughts or have ambitions or have purpose and, and so on. But our outlets for them like all come out of this choice and, 
you know, what we want to do rather than it being given to us. So I, I saw these guys just coming out being really angry. So then I started posting more stuff like how has feminism hurt you? You know, what has happened? And like, what's your personal story in this? And actually it's funny because this is really clear what I noticed. Every single martial arts friend that I had. And again, there's definitely people who <clears throat> do martial arts that have problems. And some of these guys who came out and said stuff had problems, but they were all like, whether they were on the right side, the left side, whether they agreed with feminism or not, they were very rational and would respect people. And what I noticed was guys who were from the pickup uh, community and didn't really grow past that were really angry and, and insanely angry. And in fact, could not tell their story of how feminism had hurt them or could not tell their story about how they had pain, but they could tell why society is screwed and how we need to change it and it's an emergency and it has to happen now. And what's so crazy is that for me, and it's actually really enlightening these last two weeks of posting this stuff because I've had some people talk more about feminism and I'm like, because this is what I don't like about feminism is that when you get extreme feminists who will like objectify me, like they don't even know me, I'm just a symbol for you know, what they hate or something like, or whatever it is. Like they don't want to hear my story. It's really, you know, kind of a bad thing. It, it, like that, that, that's ridiculous, you know, um, that you would pass up what you know about me or not, or knowing anything about me just to pass judgment for your cause. That, you know, any cause that takes away from a personal interaction is bad. Again, totally. I have this theory about judgment and choice. Judgment is dependent upon a separation between two people. This is my own definition, right? So of course everybody has their own, but I use it within what I teach. So judgment means there's like kind of like a wall or a barrier, or I can't talk to you because it might be harmful, right? <clears throat> but choice might be that I experience you and I decide to like you or not. And, uh, you know, even God, when you get to people's sex lives, we try and rather than allow choice to happen because it could hurt us, we try and use judgment and polarity to, to have our sexual interactions, to have our friendships and so on. Um, that rather than get to know somebody and get somebody to see the depth of you, you'd rather have them side on these surface level opinions and, you know, go with them. And we click off into these different groups and it's really, really kind of a terrible thing. Um, I don't know, man. It's, we live in an interesting yeah. time, but I think it'll level out, you know, uh, yeah, but in terms of is? me experiencing hate, oh, good. I haven't really experienced hate. Gotcha. Yeah, what do you think that is where people were like, uh, turn away from the real interaction of the person right in front of them to like an ideology? Because that seems to be, <coughs> all of, like everything you're mentioning, it seems to be, uh, that's where it comes from. And even like, like two days ago, I was on a date with a, with a girl. We were connecting really well. We we're spending like half the day together. And then somehow we mentioned something political and she's like, oh, you like Jordan Peterson. And she's like, oh, well, this means all this other stuff about you. And some of the yeah. stuff she was actually, she guessed correctly. She's like, well, I bet you listen to Joe Rogan and I bet you do this, yeah. I bet you do that. But I bet you also are a misogynist. And like we had yeah. just spent like six hours together and she was willing to change her entire opinion of me because of one of Yeah, that always sucks. And you know, you walk away from that situation going like, man, fuck that. It, you know, cause I've had that too. You know, one of my friends, so this is the other thing. It's like a lot of people will judge you on the surface and not know you. Then there will be people who actually know you. They know you and like, because you side with a different, whatever, political thing, they will then hate you. And I just don't get that. That is, that to me is disturbing, but it's very common. In fact, in 2012, that happened. Because <clears throat> in 2012, I had, uh, I had this major issue with my kids. In fact, why I was like a few minutes late was I was dropping one of my kids off and then had to come back home and da da da. And um, I didn't see him for five years and that sucked. And I didn't see him for five years because, you know, the mother of my kids and I had some dispute and it got way out of hand. It was really screwed up. And thankfully, the, the whole benefit of that is, or the whole like result of that that matters has happened in me being in his life. But when it happened then, there was a lot of like stupid stuff. A lot of stuff that I will say was unfair by the court system and so on, da, da, da. Like this is what I don't get about the men's rights groups is I've had really bad stuff happen. And I'm not trying to say that other people haven't had bad stuff happen, but I also 
don't know a lot of guys who are in the hysteria of the manosphere who've had like that sort of thing, the, the sorts of things that had happened to me happen. And what happened, it was in 2012. Um, so it was actually before I met you, but the, the, so the proverbial shit hadn't hit the fan yet. And uh, <clears throat> so when that happened, I was really angry. You know, I, it's, you go to court and people don't, they don't care. I mean, you go to court, the judge doesn't care. The other attorneys don't care. They don't care about other evidence. There was a lot of stuff going on. There's all this gossip BS story that was actual reality. I guess it wasn't gossip, but legitimate stuff coming into this argument that was basically happening between uh, my sons and their mom. And, and it ended up unfair, in my opinion, on my part, massively, massively. So much to the point where it was a whole criminal case. It, it wasn't just civil. It was terrible, man. It's terrible. Um, now that all being said, in looking at all of the story into this, man, I get why men's rights people are pissed. And at the time I went and looked at a bunch of men's rights stuff. I actually, uh, I remember at the 21 convention, I was like, yeah, man, I'm gonna, I'm like, I'm gonna dedicate like everything I do to men's rights. It, it was like a new phenomenon at the moment. And that lasted less than six months, easy, where I was looking at these guys and they were just weak. They did not get on with their lives. They just blamed. They, they were so hateful towards women. I remember at the time, The Lord of the Rings came out, or one of them, the last movie, and they were mad because they put in a female character in the movie. And they were, they were like up in arms about it. I was like, man, who cares? Like all I wanted was to see my kids. That's all I wanted. That, that's all that I wanted. All I wanted was a fair day in court and all i want is if this happens more for that to change for other people i don't want to continue the gossip i don't want to continue that because that's not changing the system like having me be angry does nothing to the mechanic of what harmed me and guys did not get that so i just went on with my stuff and um man it was, it's actually a, a great story and a sad story to i guess it's not sad at all actually whatever um to, to really go through it. So basically in, in May of 2012, I, did, I no longer saw my kids. Um, I didn't know that though at the time because there was like all this court stuff and you know CPS crap that went involved in it, and lawyers, attorneys talking. And around that 21 convention time, I found out that I wouldn't see them for about two years. So that was then devastating. At that point, that was devastating. It was just terrible. Mm -hmm. And and man, you know, like even the day that I found that out, it was like, I just sat, I called everybody on my phone, man, and nobody picked up. Eventually they did. But um, yeah, I just sat under a bridge. It was next to my attorney's office and I just cried and it was terrible, man. And, uh, <clears throat> and that was probably the most pure moment of me that experienced in this. Now my kids could tell you another story of like what happened with them, which was, was uh, you know, they could tell about their hard times or their good times associated with it. But five years later, when I was able to see them, I was more solid in my life. I was better off in my career. I had a stable relationship and home for them to come into. I had a strong family that was supportive around them. And all of those things were achieved and cannot be achieved by talking shit, blaming, fighting a system which is just out of anger. Um, like if you want to change the court system or get a new vote to change how custody things are taken, uh, you know, care of, by all means do that. But talking trash online or in person or whatever did nothing for me. But you know, what was funny around that time when I was looking at all the men's rights stuff, I just remember some of my friends that were into feminism were like, you know, man, we don't want to talk to you anymore. Cause I would like post some stuff on Facebook. I was like, Oh, let me share this thing about other guys going with their custody cases. And they just stopped talking to me. And some of them would be like, you know, you're a racist, you're a bigot. And I was like, whoa, what the fuck are you talking about? You know, just the, the hate was so intense. And I was like, man, I, this is crazy. Fast forward, you know, 2012 to 2015, 2016, you start to see the manosphere get bigger and mirror those same things of like thinking that you could solve a problem by hating somebody or saying all the reasons why they hated feminism and do the same thing, the th same things themselves. Yeah. What's been, 
Yeah, sorry, sorry. I got it. Yeah, no, I'm just saying, uh, like, uh, the men's, I, I don't know a lot about the men's rights, stuff, <coughs> but I, from what I've seen, it's, like, so unmasculine to not deal with your shit. Like, the story you're telling is you had adversity, you dealt with it, you grew from it, you're a better man. Like, that's, like, that's the hero's journey, in a sense, whereas a lot of the guys in these forums, they're, like, doing the most unmasculine thing of not handling their problems. Yeah, which, it's weird, man. Which is, There's yeah. a lot I could go on and on about it but uh but you know it, it, the most interesting thing about the the uh more recent like facebook dialogues that i've gotten in with which are good they're really good so basically martial arts dudes that's all i know in my life martial arts dudes are people who seek men's development men's development guys can be level-headed some can be really really angry martial arts dudes generally pretty sane um, the women involved. What, what do you think that is about martial arts? Is it the fact that you, your ego is getting checked constantly or like, it's just real? Like, <clears throat> Cause you don't one, see that in other sports necessarily. One, it's mainly, uh, uh, martial artists in the jujitsu community. And, um, it is more heavily in Austin, which tends to be a more liberal city. Um, but it, it might also be like, uh, the nature of the sport, but check this out. If you, I used to do uh, JKD and tactical martial arts and I was in the only tactical martial arts group at the time that you saw me, I was like heavily into like, like all that sort of stuff, street fighting. And um, man, got way too many concussions. I, my teeth are all cracked from it and all this stuff. But like that was, that, that group was awesome. But that group is the only, well, I could be wrong, but the only, actually it's very true. The only tactical martial arts group is not like an alt-right type group. The other groups that I know are very, very right-wing, if not in that alt-right kind of like, uh, just just very intense stuff of people who practice a lot of like the I'll kill you sort of martial arts with like knife fighting and those types of things. And it was funny because I was just training. I, I'm not good with the sticks or Kali anymore. And I only, I trained, uh, you know, under a guy who trained under Paul Vunak, who's a legit JKD dude, but the emphasis was more on street fighting rather than the art of Kali. But I was training with this Kali guy the other day, and we were talking about this, is that how many stick and knife groups end up becoming like very, very much on that uh, super right-leaning side. But here's also the thing with that, is my general thing is, I may have opinions, but I want to talk to everybody because the moment I start shutting people out, you know, it's, it's, it's terrible. Um, you know, and you mentioned Jordan Peterson and I didn't like Jordan. Pe I've met Jordan Peterson. I met him at on it, but, um, and talked to him briefly about this, which was like, man, his following can be insane. And what I needed to see was I only saw one side of his following, but what's interesting about his following. I mean, Jordan is a good example of this. He generally says good stuff. I think with sex and relationships, he's kind of ridiculous, but you know, whatever. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> um, um, and, and I mean, like, you know, I mean, the guy's just put in such a broadcast of, of, uh, I mean, Jordan's basically like be responsible for yourself in a, in a way which is very smart and intellectual and it's, it's gr a great message. Right. <clears throat> but the problem is, is like, let's say when Jordan Peterson is talking about, let's say, state reparations and disagreeing with it. Nobody who is on the other side is listening to him. And part of that is because he's not speaking to them. And this is one of the, the I don't want to say flaws because it's not his responsibility to speak to everybody. He's not trying to speak to everybody. He's just trying to share his message. But the other side is not listening to him. And so only one side is listening to him. And that one side gets more and more polarized. And then they all start caring about what the truth is or what is right or what, you know, is the absolute argued thing. And here's also another thing that I believe. And of course, I care about things being true. I value truth. I value honesty. I value all these things. But the human race has been able to live and flourish when it was told a lie. I'm not trying to encourage lying. And I get the problem with lying. But if you want to attack people or hate people because of truth, you are missing the point. The point is, is that you can connect with people again. 
And if you do that by force, that's not choice. That's not, you know, the values of humanity. That's not why probably, you, let's say in the, the state reparations argument, that's why straight state reparations suck because I, I didn't, man, what did I do? You know, why, why am I being taxed for something, you know, hundreds of years ago? Or some might argue decades ago, or some might argue even now, just by whatever privilege I may get. I'm going like, man, that's so unjust. I don't even know these people. Why do I owe it, right? And so, because I'm being objectified by a system or a government, I'm willing to objectify the other side back. We, we've got to sift past all these things. Now, that being said, things like state reparations or whatever, the, these problems do need to be solved. I'm not saying that the problem isn't there, but the way that we're going about it with all this heavy judgment is, is just ridiculous. That also, the other thing that you kind of mentioned was uh, <clears throat> the, the men's rights stuff seems like such a non-masculine form of things. What's funny and sad and ironic is now there are like groups that are like very masculine and uh, in moving on that, because it used to be that men's rights guys were all like fat and, you know, like yeah. didn't have any like self-esteem. And now there's, now there's these like Elliot Hulse is in there with guns and shooting really? stuff with in I'm front of like on the podcast. I didn't know he was a men's rights guy. Dude. Yeah. He's doing the 21 convention and they're like trying to get women not to vote and, uh, 21 convention is very different now. So I, I no longer am associated with them. So if you ask about like, uh, like hate given to me, nobody's really given me hate, but uh, like Anthony, uh, the guy who runs it will troll me quite a bit. And, uh, and I'm like, Hey man, like, you know, like it was funny. Cause on one of the things I was like, Hey man, I was thinking about calling you, but now this makes it very difficult. And he's like, like, or I was thinking about reaching out to you. He's like, you know, my number. Why are you talking to me here? I'm like, dude, you're the one starting these like fights online with me, not you. But a lot so of the voicing of the trolling you because you're anti men's rights activism. I'm not. No, I think men should get their rights, but get your freaking rights, man. You don't need to hate people. You don't need to like some of the stuff is so weak that yeah. I, I think that they get into. And it's, it's, uh, it's pathetic. Like I, uh, I don't know, man. It's just, it's also ironic too, because when it comes to like sex and sexuality, which is always a big topic, like, I mean, man, I've lived that. I've lived that beyond, like they would have a lot of catching up to do uh, to, to get to where I was at. And I understand. And so a lot of it's about like control over women and power and all this stuff. Like uh, there was this, uh, man, there's this funny post, like, um, it, but this will, this will go to show kind of the logic. So there's, uh, <clears throat> there, there was a wave that was heavy on intellect and, um, that that's like heavy in men's rights. And then there's a wave that's now on this like alpha kick of like, you know, fighting guns, like kicking ass and, you know, doing all this sort of stuff. Um, but basically like, the the whole thing with with the intellect you, you get like this these people tying their heads in knots with of like how sex works it's like the opposite of one taste because it's yeah. like hyper masculine on the sexual and i think yeah. one of the big imbalances with one taste was hyper ma masculine or hyper feminine on yeah. the sexual and um and you need both one's like just in let's say like let's say one taste made some mistakes or whatever. I don't have much experience with them, but um, I just thought it was fun. like the funniest thing about one taste was like, all right, we'll go do this thing. And I was like, okay, cool. I'll do your thing to massage these chicks vaginas. And they'd be like, well, the rules are we can't have sex. And I'd be like, you want to fuck? And they'd be like, yes. And it was just, okay. And then eventually the like Rachel and uh, whoever else started like, cornering them in like and saying like if you keep having sex with steve you can't be a part of the group and the girls were like that's weird and i guess some of them may have left some of them did leave the group which is what i heard about this and the other ones were basically like uh like i guess went off and you know became one taste like whatever followers on the hardcore and i've also met one taste people that are really great people too but it's just it, it got weird but when sex starts to control the it, 
you know, that's, that's not how sex works. Like sex is an exchange. And so what you see with men and, and stuff happening is on the intellect, like this guy, he posted this, this is so funny, man. He posted this thing. It's just a quote. And I saw it. I just thought it was so stupid because it fits in my life, but it says like, guys don't take pictures for your girlfriends on social media. This is all just a ploy for her to find more alphas and options and all this sort of stuff. And I just thought like, man, I handle all of my wife's social media. Um, like I, she just released a video today. I shot it, I edit it, I take most of her pictures, like all that sort of stuff. And uh, you know, I want her to get exposure with her career. And like, I, I, first off, the dynamic of this is all wrong. Number one, if these guys had any experience with women, first off, if I'm a photographer, that means that I can get laid by a woman any moment, any time, oh. any age. Like, and, and that's what I've done in my life. Now, I know the dude posting this may not have been posting as being a photographer, but as a photographer, like, dude, what the fuck are you talking about? Yeah, you're making like, them feel sexy and like they're attributing <clears throat> that to you on some It level. is, and it's the best. It's not like you're, I mean, you could do it maliciously and take advantage of people, but literally you could take pictures of women and they will choose to sleep with you. It is, it is a great thing, right? It's, it's a tremendous advantage. The other thing too is, is if you knew anything about women and, and controlling women, and this, and this is like something that I've lived, man. I don't do it with my wife. Why would you want to do it with your wife? But I've done it many, many times for better, for worse. That if somebody wants to fuck somebody else and they're a girl that I'm trying to objectify, like they're all obsessed with, I would encourage her to do it. In fact, I wouldn't just encourage her to do it. I would make her do it and not have sex with her until she did it. And if she did that, she would never forget me. As fucked up as that sounds, these guys are trying to be fucked up, but they're using all this like, like, man, studying surveys and statistics to try and get what sex is, yet none of those guys have been fucking. None of those guys have had their dick worshiped by women. None of those guys have lived a life where they've experienced sex on that level. And, and there's, there's a lot of guys who have, and they're not in those groups. And, yeah, uh, yeah. I, it, I coach a lot of red pill guys now. <clears throat> a lot of them are really angry. I think there's a lot of great stuff on the yeah. rational level there. But um, I tell them all the time, you'd get laid a lot more and a lot more easily if you weren't so angry. <laughs> if you weren't so well, this was so this was a Rolo Tomasi post who's supposed to be the genius of whatever. And um, and, and this is the other thing with I don't get and I, I can never study his stuff. So I'm not like a big intellectual guy. But when I see his stuff, it's like, man, this is the stupidest. This is this is not how it works like from anybody who's gotten laid, like I tried to read his book. It was like PUA circa 2006 for people with Asperger's. I do not see the difference between the rational male. And I know there's three books, but I can only speak on the rational male. I, I do not see the difference between the rational male and like the mysteries, you know, guide to women or whatever that love drop wrote. Like, I do not see the difference. It's all value based. And, and the other thing too, it's all based on evolutionary psychology which is an assumption. It, it, it isn't, is not science. And, but, it, but it's good stuff. I love evolutionary psychology. I love it, man. But those dudes wouldn't be alphas. Like all these guys who are talking about it are not alphas, let alone, I think they're misusing the word alpha because they're trying to use it in the biological sense, which arguably exists. But if it would exist, it means that you are literally just bigger and stronger and you can overpower people, which is not them. They are alphas is in terms of leaders in society via society, via the same society that gave feminism power, which they hate, is what gives them any sort of power as men. They are not alphas by any stretch of leadership that we evolved to have. It, it, it's, it's just very ridiculous like how all that stuff works around. Yeah, but yeah, I, I see this a lot in the in pickup too. Like, um, <coughs> guys, same, their framework same. is that yeah. they're in competition with every woman. Like, every woman is like a challenge to conquer, and like you don't get that worship you're talking about unless you see some sort of cooperation or like they always think yeah. they need to they need to be a choice. Them, yeah. what, as opposed to like they probably want to worship <coughs> you if you're the right kind of guy. You know, like in my communities, there's a Sunday call. Like it started at noon at seven thirty, and um. It's still going on right now. And I was on it on the ride home from dropping off my kid. And uh, man, the, the best is like the YouTube comments that I get when I talk about like any of this stuff. Cause like, they're like some anonymous guys. Like, I hope your family 
dies or some like intense thing. But anyway, except for Anthony Johnson, he's the only one who uses his name. But uh, he doesn't say wish death upon my family, but he's like, you're in grave danger. It's like, all right, man. But um, they're, they're on this call, right? And I keep looking Wait, at my on. phone. I'm just curious, so what, what, what is Anthony Chorley about? Like, what is it that he thinks is so terrible? That well, doing? I'm talking about him now, but he thinks I'm making videos about him, which is part of the thing which made this, uh, this thing like split. So basically, Anthony ran the convention. I was very involved in the convention. I hosted many of them. I always supported Anthony. And he got a divorce. I supported him. And when he got a divorce, he got really like angry towards women. And a lot of people do. I talked to the only guy who's still involved in the convention about it. And I said, hey, man, I'm kind of worried about him. And he said, most fires put themselves out. And I said, yeah, but a lot of fires hurt a lot of people. And um, he decided to like let Anthony chill. So at a certain point, I said, Anthony, you're sounding insane. And you know, I'm not a shrink. I'm very far from one. But you're doing things like I work with crazy people. And that that is true. I mean, like I work with a lot of drug addicts and on the regular, I work with men constantly, you know, thousands upon thousands of people. You know, at this point, my business is split with, between people who have addiction issues that are like hardcore. They're not like, they're not simple. It's not like, uh, and not to diminish a porn addiction, but I mean, it's like, you know, people using drugs and living that sort of street lifestyle. And then also with half men's development. So that's literally half my income. And I, I work with a lot of people. I work with a lot of therapists, psychologists, psychiatrists that interact with different clients I have. And I was just saying like, hey man, you're showing traits of somebody who like should probably seek some help, like delusions of grandeur, thinking everybody like heavy paranoia, um, heavy polarity, blame, um, refusal, like inability to see where you can be wrong or objectively look at yourself. And um, I was like, you should chill. And he took it public. And then I was just like, hey, man, you're taking this public. Um, you know, what's up? And so then he just kept going, kept going, kept going. And eventually he was like, you know, man, I'm, I'm totally done with the convention and all that sort of stuff. And I even told him, I said, man, even though I don't support a lot of the, the red pill dudes you're talking about, and I think they're like stupid, I would still be a part of your convention. Because I didn't agree. Like when I'd see like Sasha day game speak, it was like, Man, this is a guy who, I don't know if he's still around, but a dude who never had success with women, coaching men on success with women. I mean, I'd introduce him on stage and I'd help people out who, who clearly I knew were, were terrible dating coaches or terrible life coaches and these types of things that I would, you know, still work within the convention. Because the reason why I'm leaving is because you're like, dude, you're coming, you're coming after me. You're, you're like directly insulting me. I'm like trying to help you out, man, <clears throat> which I've always done. And you should always know. And then it was like, he started sending me messages like, like you've been secretly plotting to take the convention away from me. And um, like, I see it in your speeches, you're using subversive language over the past, like even five years, that even speeches from like 2010, or whatever it was like older speeches, you're, you're doing things that is tricking the audience. And I'm like, dude, Man, first off, I'm one of the least popular speakers there. Um, like, nobody's watching me. If I wanted to, like, trick the world, I would be doing it in some other way. It wouldn't be for you, man. And, I, like, no way am I trying to steal a convention from you. So there was all this, like, insane shit um, happening. And I was like, man, I, I hope you do well. Like, you know, like, you do not sound mentally gotcha. good. Okay. The other interesting thing with Anthony is Anthony's totally normal when you talk to him face to face. It's online where this happens. And another thing I was like, dude, if you talk to me this way, like how you're talking to me online, I would beat the fucking shit out of you. Like you're, you're saying things that like, look at how you're talking to me. Like, he's like, oh, I'm having fun. I'm like, dude, you can't like trying to explain this to him was difficult. And of course I'm not saying like, I want to beat the shit out of him. I'm like, but if you say things that are threatening or insulting about like one's lifestyle or family or, you know, calling me a beta or a cuck or whatever it was. Like, it's like, dude, why, why would you like, what does that mean? Why are you trying to say that to me? And so with him, he just, uh, you know, that that's what happened. But at the same time, like he's, he's been very successful. Like he's leveraged a lot of the red pill community, you know, uh, I guess Elliot is speaking there now and so on. Um, and they're, 
you should ask Elliot if he wants women to be take off, uh, taken off the voting roster because that's one of the big themes of the convention now is um, to get yeah, campaign to have so. women not vote. Yeah, I'll ask him about that. <clears throat> he but, may but, not uh, have those beliefs, but. Uh, but anyway, I, uh, we went on a tangent. You were talking about the, you had a Sunday call. Yeah, so basically what was happening is the guys right before we, we you know, uh, started this, they were talking about pickup and like uh, the guy was asking about women and he was kind of in this mindset um, that was like, you know, if you say routines or if you say whatever, you're going to get, you know, you're going to get things, right? <clears throat> and uh, the dudes on the call were basically saying like, hey, man, you know, pickup has this idea that you can get any woman because if you do certain things, she's like biologically obligated to have sex with you or be attracted to you. And one of the guys was saying, I would never want that because I only want the woman that I deserve. See, the woman that I deserve comes from a life that I have lived. And if I have not lived that life, I cannot have a woman that I deserve. If, if I, if, well, I will only have the women I deserve, right? But I, the woman I want, the woman that I think is the solution to my problems, the, that thing, whatever it is, and it may not even be women, and this is what it turns into, is the, the, the being the dude on yachts or being the dude who makes all this money, like basically, um, you know, is the person that, man, I, I, I want to be. Why do I want that? Why do I think that's going to make me happy? Why do I relentlessly try and chase that? And I think ambition is good. I want you to get your goals. But if you do not look at the reasons driving you, then you're going to get lost in how we go about this, especially with human connection and women. See, it's different with like a boat and a yacht and money. That'll still fuck you up if you don't take care of yourself and you just achieve those things. But if you uh, basically like, try and base your sex life, which will dram drastically affect you. The feminine is supposed to affect you. You know, the masculine is supposed to be affected by the feminine. The feminine is supposed to affect the masculine and, and, and it works uh, within itself. But if you go about that, trying to get power over or control or dominate, um, man, it, it's going to mess you up. And just the simple idea of saying that I could do things and remain detached from them you know, and get the result because women are biologically predisposed to act certain ways, but me doing certain things is ridiculous. Now, social dynamics work. And what I mean by that is you can say things and get certain responses that you're going to get back, but they are all dependent upon choice. They're all dependent upon people being able to make a determination about you. And of course you could lie or you could tell the truth, but if you lie, man, you're not getting the woman you deserve. You're getting the yeah. woman you got and you will not be able to then have, you can only get. And that is a terrible thing, man. Yeah, yeah, I experienced that a lot when I was doing pickup because that was, uh, it was my entry point into personal development and I appreciate it. Oh, of course, I, yeah. I got pretty good at club game. You know, I, I could perform and whatever, but like at a regular party, I was still as awkward as ever. And it's like, mm -hmm. do I need to learn? Do I need to do a thousand approaches in every single possible environment to, to have success with women? Like it was because I wasn't actually, I didn't actually change. I was still the same type of person. I just had yeah. a good mask. And uh, yeah, it was just like, yeah, it drove me nuts. Um, I wanted to ask you, I mean, this is actually the main thing I thought I was going to ask you about, uh, which is fatherhood, because mm -hmm. um, I've been seeing your posts about it. There's not a lot of, I haven't seen a lot of guys I don't know if you could say transition, but from like the dating coaching to speaking about like that element of masculinity. And we mentioned Jordan Peterson. One of the things I disagree with him on is like his take on parenting, even though I don't have kids, I don't know much about it, but I do think um, fatherhood is like the next archetype of masculinity that I don't know anything about. So I'm curious about your, how it's changed you because you kind of went from drastically different lifestyles. It looks like. Yeah, I mean, so I had kids before or right when I was a pickup artist, which is the crazy irony. So part of it also is like, I know how to be a not so great dad. I know how to be a good dad. And, um, I, and I think that's an important story, too. <clears throat> and of, of course, you know, there could totally be judgment about that. But that's also my life to fix and something that I believe I've done a decent job doing. Um, 
that's what, that's also what I get. Don't get about judgment about things because it's like, Oh man, what a, uh, uh, man, I've made like terrible choices of father, but I think it's important for people to hear it because other people have too, and you don't have to stay that way. And I'm also not saying that with guilt, you know, uh, I'm saying that in a very realistic sense, a very in part of me is very, very proud of my actions that I took when I wasn't making the best choices for my kids. That sounds terrible, right? But at this point, I feel I have repaired those things and you can only repair so much and so on. But, you know, I'm very active in all my kids' lives and it's a huge, huge deal for me. It's a very important thing. But at one time it wasn't. And a lot of guys experience that. They need to hear that. Like somebody needs to tell that story. What's interesting also about pickup people is they don't accomplish anything. Like they're, they're like most guys who taught stuff have nothing to show for the rest of their lives, which is really terrible. Now some do, but man, a lot don't. I mean, I mean, even jujitsu, which I'm not that great at, but I mean, it's been a part of my life for almost 10 years. And in all of that, like it, it's cool, man. It's great. It's a form of dedication. You know, it's, it's a, it's something that people do. Um, photography was something that I had before. Um, uh, all of the pickup stuff is what I did before. Um, but man, what's beautiful about that is I can put that down for 10 years and do photo and video stuff like really well. Um, you, you know, and that discipline to be able to do those things is still there. I just don't see that with a lot of the guys that are in the, the men's coaching industry and in, in its entirety is really terrible, like really good at kind of like pop culture excellence, but not good at anything which takes time. And fatherhood, I hear a lot of people talk about. It. I don't know what Jordan's take on it is at, at all whatsoever. Um, I've probably heard it, but I may have, uh, I didn't retain it. Um, so I don't know what you're talking about. But man, I think more people should be talking about fatherhood. I think more people should be talking about the, the trials and tribulations of it. But I also think that it's something that will naturally come to you. And like I said, we're at this point. Um, you should interview this guy, Hans Komain. He's a great, uh, great, one of the better coaches out there. Um, I'll message you his contacts and he's amazing. I did a couple interviews with him and one of his uh, guys that's traveling with him who's all, who's named Michael Skye. And we were talking about leadership. We were talking about fatherhood. We were talking about qualities of man. And that's kind of where, you know, earlier I said for the first time in, you know, with, within this large stretch of human history, we're at this point where we're, we no longer have outlets for the urges we experience. So things like our purpose, an urge which usually got fulfilled by our communities, um, ambition, you know, uh, sex, socializing, uh, our diet, how we eat. You know, now there's all this, you know, like the Dave Asprey way to hold a diet or something like that. And we're not eating or sleeping or having sex or socializing in the way that we evolved. So now we try and assume how we evolved and you know, streamline it with all our neurosis and control in it. With fatherhood, we're, we're doing the same thing. And what I get most, so I have local men's groups and I have online groups. The online groups have existed for 10 years. The local men's group has existed for about a year. <clears throat> and we get so much about just talking about being a dad. If there are fathers in the group, there's also single guys in it too. But just hearing that, just hearing common guys talk about their experiences with fatherhood what it means. And this is a tough thing. Like, man, how do I relate to my kids? Man, when I, I didn't see my kids for five years and I got reintegrated into their life, it was difficult. How do I talk to them? How, what, what was that like? You know, I was talking to another guy who hasn't seen his son in maybe two years. And I was like, man, you know, and now he can be on Skype calls with him. He's like, this kid who I took to school every day, I could relate with him. I can't talk to him anymore. And I was like, no, man, you got to sit on that phone. You got to do what all the guys in my group told me is your job as a dad is to show up to be your best, no matter what. Even if you're not in front of your kids, you have to be your best, which is what I did for those five years, or I attempted to do that. And when you're in front of them and they're pissed off, or they don't know you, or they're going through an emotional time or whatever it is, it isn't your job to bring your bad day in it. So you as a man have to understand how to do that. And to understand how to do that, it isn't by a book, it isn't by an intellect, it's by a community I believe of other men who are experiencing that. That is vital. That is so 
unbelievably important to be a part of something like that. So fatherhood for me is being involved in my kids' lives all the time. I mean, it's crazy. I like this weekend was nuts. You know, my son premiered in a play. I have a huge theater background, which is very cool to see. Uh, you know, my other sons, I have, th- I have four, four boys and, you know, they keep me busy with all sorts of stuff to try and work and hold down a business in that. And also while well, my wife is managing her business, it's extremely difficult. And so to do that, let alone also, and man, it was great. We, we had like these jujitsu, like, oh man, it was, it was a good jujitsu weekend. But um, I, I don't get to do all that stuff so much. So I have to be able to make that a part of my life. You know, any leadership that I have, which I, I never consider myself a traditional leader, but, you know, I definitely lead men in different areas. It all has to come down to like how the, how the people in my life can interact in my life. The guys in my groups, they're on a call right now. There's however I could look at my phone, but there's like 12 dudes or something on there talking that are in their ninth hour of the call or eighth hour of the call. There's guys that I train with in terms of jujitsu. There's guys that I meet with in my groups. There's guys that I consult with in terms of being a good dad. But man, how can I be involved in my kids' lives? You know, how can uh, the kids who I have a dent of not seeing them and whatever resentments or sadness or whatever comes their way, which will ultimately manifest at some point if it does in their life. Um, but if it does, it will later. Um, you know, how do I be there for them? How do I, how do those things, you know, work themselves out in life? How do we go with the, the natural resistances that man is supposed to have, uh, which is something that has always bothered me about a lot of uh, uh, men's advice out there is that nobody talks about the, the total collapses that you'll have in your life and the inevitable pain that is going to happen that is going to shape you to be a, a better person. Um, but man, fatherhood is a great thing. It's in your DNA. You know how to do it. Um, to me, it was tremendously beneficial to be around groups of other fathers. And uh, I think it is something that we need to talk about. But yeah, what what specific questions do you have on it? Yeah, I don't know. I mean, uh, since I don't have kids, uh, and it's just something mm-hmm. I theorize about and something I want to do. Um, I was like, how do you, the, the only thing I picked up from talking to a lot of guys with kids is that, and it, you're kind of echoing this too, like, the best way to be a good dad is to have your shit together, like to be the most secure person. Like a lot of what you're saying just now seems to mirror what it's like to be a good man in a relationship. Like you don't get <coughs> triggered by her shit. You don't bring your bad day into her thing. You kind of just handle your shit and like be there for her. Well, yeah, but, but so here's the thing too. Like, yeah, I'm, I'm very real about this and people in my groups are very real. We all have bad days. We all get triggered by our women. We all are affected by our women. We're affected by our kids, but how do we do that? We do not achieve the ideal. We work towards achieving the ideal. We strive for protect or perfection. We strive for perfection, but we, we are, are doing the best that we can with that. And so what I get from a lot of guys is they never talk about that. I mean, this, this happens all the time at my live meetups, man. So every week we meet up in Austin and, um, once a month, maybe twice a month, there'll be a guy who is in a relationship and he's brokenhearted. He doesn't know what to do. He has reacted. He has been weak. That's, that's going to happen. If you're a guy and you want to be so strong that you're never going to be weak and broken down by a girl, then one, you haven't met the right girl. And two, you, you haven't even, you haven't really had a relationship, you know? And so these things do happen, but how do we struggle for it? You know, so that being said is like, I've been plenty where I haven't been secure financially or mentally or emotionally, but learning to walk the best I can alongside my kids or in my relationship during that is key, you know, and thinking that I always have to maintain an image or look of power is, man, is not it. Your family should be the absolute thing in the world that sees all of you. And if you need to hide that from them, to think that you need to be strong because you're insecure about yourself, man, you're full of shit. Your family should know everything about you. Like, so my wife, what, I, I'm always going to be strong for her. I mean, I, I, I do, but she's also going to see me when I'm weak. She is the person next to me. Now, yeah, my men's group is there. And, and I, and I think I, my men's group is loyal as fuck to me and I'm loyal as fuck to them. Like we go out of our way for each other. 
but my family is a commitment to forever. And so I have to be able to show that reality, but the wisdom comes into play is like, if I can, you know, when is that appropriate to show to my kids or what, at what point do they need to know this? Uh, one of the, one of the guys in my group, totally separate from a, <clears throat> a father, he's, he's like 28. And he had the first father son talk where his father saw him as a man and it affected him. He was like, man, I couldn't believe it. I couldn't believe it. You know, my dad is finally talking to me or not finally, my dad talked to me like one-on-one. -on -one. He wasn't talking down to me. He wasn't giving me advice. He, we were just shooting the shit. I couldn't believe it. And we, and a lot of the older guys that were like, Hey man, that's the first of many, you know, it's the first of many things. And it might take a little bit while to, to eke out, but it's a different phase of it. And so there's just this whole spectrum of masculinity that I don't see people talking about. I see him talking about the fire and the badassery and all that stuff, but man, fucking talk about the time when your wife almost left you or talk about the time, like, you know, when your kid didn't believe in you. Talk about the time when you failed. Talk about the time, man, I, I hate this shit about the men's development industry. Talk about the time when you, you are the leader of your family or they see you that way and you led them into BS. You led them into a mistake. And you got to sit there all together, you, your wife, your kids, for whatever, are suffering because of your mistake. Talk about that and how you let out of that. Because somebody that leads is going to fuck up. And if you don't hear that, then man, that person is waiting for a fuck up. Somebody that leads also needs to know how to follow when he doesn't know. And you just don't hear this dynamic around the image of masculinity. It's terrible. Man, it, like it is, it is a shitty thing. You know, when, uh, I mean, goddamn, dude, like, you know, my, I have a good career. I'm very grateful for it. But taking care of, of four kids and also, launching my wife's career, which is, is now started to take off, which is awesome. I hope I can retire soon, but uh, ain't gonna happen. But, but that was tough, man. That's tough. Man, there was a lot like where I'm very fortunate where I'm like, shit, man, if I didn't get some of these sales, if I didn't luck out on these things, but the whole time I always showed up to work, I worked my ass off for it. You know, on the days that I was tired, man, I, I couldn't be, you know, if I took a nap, I'd be so stressed and, and I still am you know, because it, it was my job to do that. And there's, there's plenty of failures in that. There's plenty of fuck ups. There's plenty of things where, where it was like, shit, man, how are we going to buy these groceries to get to where we need to get? And it's my job. Everybody's pissed off at me because I can't do it. That's part of, you know, masculinity that's there. And it's a normal thing. It's something that's very available in all of our culture, but we're not talking to those guys. We're talking to the, the iconic people about it. And it's a bummer, man. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it's a real important message. Um, I, I have one specific question. It's probably going to be my last question, <coughs> too. It's actually uh, yeah. the one thing about Jordan Peterson that I disagree with. It was in his 12 Rules for Life book. He had something, and I'm paraphrasing, um, as a parent, don't ever let your kids do something that would have you hate them, which I think is full of implications that I disagree with. But I'm curious on what your take is as an actual parent of four boys. Uh, so don't let your kids do anything that would have you dislike them, I think is the actual thing. Dude, your kids are going to, your, your kids are going to do tons of things that are going to make you dislike them. I mean, that, that's what I assumed. I mean, yeah, I, I, it from a son's perspective, like, man, if I did everything my dad wanted me to do, I'd be oh, miserable. Yeah, my, we're totally different. And I see all well, these guys who don't do what they want to do in life because they're, they're afraid of their parents' judgment. Anyway, I'm curious to your take on that. No, man. I mean, man, I was a terrible son. To my, like, my parents are awesome. My parents were like, I grew up in, in a household that was extremely controlling. I, I was a drug addict at a very early age for perhaps for a reason, but they're all my choices. You know, even though like I may have got the shit end of a stick on a few scenarios or whatever, I'm the one who chose to be angry about it and hold on to it. My brother definitely didn't. You know, he went on to, to be almost flawless in many areas of his life. But <clears throat> the thing is, is that uh, I took a lot of things wrong. And so when I take them wrong, I create a life which had a lot of pain. I mean, like, look, you, you don't think my parents are mad at me when they found me OD'd and fucking dead and have to call an ambulance to pick me up or whatever it was. Like, I mean, you don't think that when I got kicked out of school or, 
you know, whatever the fuck it was, man. Like all those things were, were areas where my parents, I don't know what they thought, you know, I, even talking about them now was like, they'd say it was like, Oh, well, it was a hard time and da, 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 da. But they, they were, and they were, you know, good people. They were people that, um, had like, you know, well-established in the community, you know, everything was right. You know, my dad, doctor, my mom, uh, took care of us. She was a, a teacher before she was, was a house mom. She would hate that word. Um, but then, and then my brother, you know, older than me, he always did right, man. I did so many things that would make my parents dislike me. Then saying, fuck, I mean, they disowned me multiple times in my life. And, um, and, and that's a beautiful story. I mean, could you imagine not talking to your son or very rarely from like 20 to 23 and then also from 28 or whatever it was to 30, like cut out completely. And also being a pickup artist, like, man, that probably pissed them off the most. And, and especially when I was a pickup artist, man, I was like crazy sexually aggressive and, and very open about it. And, and I would still be open about it. The thing is, is that there's something about life that's going to teach you something. And if we think we know it, man, when you're not humble, you're going to be humiliated. When we think we know about life and we think we know the rules for it. And I'm not saying that because of Jordan's book. I haven't read his book and I don't fully under, I don't get his perspective of, of what he's saying there, but like, <clears throat> the thing is, is, uh, man, your kids are going to teach you crazy things, man. You know, all the things that my kids are is they're, re they're clearly reflections of me, man. It's so funny. Cause I, I always tell my oldest kids, I say like, man, your mom would be so mad. Cause she was always like, I I'm going to take the Maeda out of the kid or like, you know, I, I don't want them to be like you, you know, you're too effed up. And, and a lot, she was right about that. And I'm like, man, I hate to say it, guys, you're a lot like me, but in different versions, making different choices with that, different expressions, ones that I would never make, things that I think are like abhorrent, things that I think it's like, man, you pussy, you whatever, you, you're too crazy, you're, you know, the opposite of a pussy, whatever the, the fuck it is. But that's not my job. That's not my job to judge them. It's my job to show up. It's not my job to go like, Oh, uh, what did Jordan Peterson say? It's not my job to say like, oh, what did the red pill say? Oh, what did, uh, you know, the, the Republicans or Democrats say? It's my job to say like, hey, let me be in front of you because we're going to be together until one of us dies. And that's, that's what we are. That's what we're showing up to. And that's, that, that I think is the most important thing. So maybe what he's saying is like, don't let your kid do something so bad that's going to make you resent them because it's not your job to ever resent them no matter what they do. Maybe he's saying that, but your, your kids are going to do crazy things. You know, my, my parents did resent me for rightful reasons. And, um, and I think the better story in that is like, how do I have a relationship with them? I mean, I can't believe it that I have a better relationship with my parents than my brother does now. Like they come and visit. I mean, my brother lives far away. He lives in New Zealand. So, but, um, you know, like we're much more interactive, you know, they're looking to retire where myself and my wife can be around them. I, I could not fathom that. You know, I was the guy that swore that, it, you know, my mom and dad's funeral, I would tell the truth about them, the true facts, you know, but there's something that's deeper than all that. That's a connection and a, a beautiful thing. And, and a, a vast reality that came out of years and years of experiences that, that happened that, I don't know. People only want to hear the highlight real story of it. So, man, I think that, you know, my kids will surely, I got a long way to go, man. Challenge me in all sorts of, of crazy ways. And uh, it's not my job to judge or resent them. It's my job to love them and give guidance and understanding. And of course, put my foot down. My problem, like, I'm, I'm not a codependent dude. My problem isn't not putting my foot down. My problem, my problem is putting my foot down too much and maybe being too, too much of the controlling side. But, but uh, you know, man, like, I, I hope, you know, and I don't really have a choice in this, but I hope to be changed by my kids. Yeah, thanks. Yeah, it's a great reflection.
Yeah, I enjoyed talking to you, man. I'm glad we I'm glad we connected here. I've been uh, good stuff. Enjoying, I've been enjoying your uh, your <coughs> Instagram videos too. Um, yeah. Where can uh, people find more about your work? So you know, it's so funny because I just say follow me on social media now. That's probably the best way to do it. So everything's at Steve Maeda except Facebook. Facebook is uh, facebook.com slash the Maeda. But um, the Instagram, I don't really use Twitter, YouTube. Um, just look for me there. And then if you want to join any of my stuff, what I would actually say is join my groups. If you go to the free Facebook group for Austin Men's Development, that's pretty keen. And um, you can also go to the sexuallife.com or austinmensdevelopment.com and check stuff out there. Um, you'll see what a terrible web developer I am. But if you get involved in my coaching stuff, man, we're like, we're, we're, I mean, man, this call on Sunday, will go 15 hours. We'll have another one Wednesday. It'll go nine hours. We'll have ones on Thursday. We have ones on Saturday. Like, so around the clock, we're like a tight, basically what I always say is 24 seven with the different groups that we have online too, of, uh, you know, how we interact with guys and, you know, it's a good thing. And if it's not for you, it's not for you. But uh, yeah, man, just check out the videos. We, there's a lot of cool interviews coming up. So uh, cool. you got to watch out for that one. Got to have you on there. When are you coming back into town? You're just um, life on the road? Yeah, I'm, I'm in Bali right now. If you, <clears throat> you hear the, the wildlife behind me. Um, I don't know. Awesome. I, I kind of live in Thailand now. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah, I don't know if I tell you, I was living with a girlfriend. We split up. I came back to get my stuff, and I, I don't know if, when, I'm, when I'm coming back to Austin. But yeah. Yeah, no, no. Uh, yeah, like uh, mainly I, I know these types of interviews are great, but I try and do face-to-face -face ones, so I'm releasing all those, I think, some point next week. And there, there's a lot that I have recorded, and they're all pretty complex. I don't know why I do this to myself. <laughs> They're, they're yeah, complex I edits. Look to so. them. Yeah, 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 yeah. You got it, man. Good All right, stuff. Man. All, right. All right. Yeah, we'll talk to you soon.